ready to go over into Canaan land. They were getting ready to go over and possess the land. And they were getting ready to go over and challenge the devil. And you know what? He says to be strong, how many times in this book? How many times in this? To be strong in the Lord. He gave this land to the children of Israel. And he told them they was going to possess all of this land. But the whole idea that you see in this book, he's telling them like as an example, be strong. Verse 6. Good courage, for into this people thou shalt divide for an inheritance. There was a lot of obstacles here. If you find this word meditate, it's also found in Deuteronomy chapter 6. They were told in Deuteronomy chapter 6 to teach it to their people. Want me to show it to you? Look in Deuteronomy chapter 6. I'll give you an idea of what this was supposed to do to people. You're supposed to learn this. You're not supposed to be a patsy. The devil will make you a patsy. I'm telling you, you're not no match for the devil. In chapter 6, this is where the phylacteries come into play. In chapter 6, he says, Fear ye the Lord, in verse 2, The mightest fear of the Lord thy God to keep his statutes and commandments which I command thee this day, that thy and thy sons and all the days of thy life might be prolonged. And you see what he's talking about? Without controlling yourself, you will not have the life that God wants you to have. So he tells them in verse 3, Hear ye, O Israel, observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord thy God of thy fathers have promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Notice what he said in verse 4. Hear ye, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God, he one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, with all of thy soul, with all of thy mind. And these words, <clears throat> which I command me this day, shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Now notice what he said. Thou shalt talk to them when thou sittest in thy house. When thou walkest by the way. When thou liest down. And when thou rise up. Now if you do all these things, you're going to be a great person. Verse 8. Look what he commanded them to do. This is where the Holy Ghost comes in. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand. And they shall be a frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them up on the post of thy house and on thy gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God hath brought thee into the land, which he sware unto thy fathers to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, to give it unto thee, goodly city that thou buildest not. All of the good things that God has in store for you, and I thank the Lord that he can bring them to pass, will be in heaven. There's a lot of stuff down here that we're not really ready to handle right yet. Now, I know that's coming against the theology of everybody. Let me tell you, we're supposed to be soldiers. Can I hear an amen? amen. How are you going to take care of a lot of materialism and a lot of money, and you're going to serve God? That's a corrupted idea anyway. You know, I think every person needs to get it in your heart. Get all of this stuff they've preached to people off TBN, church channel and all this stuff about oh yeah I'm going to come in and my stuff man I'm going to buy 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 that's that's the biggest bunch of garbage and a bunch of mind control I've ever heard in my life I have to say they had me one time (laughs) but I read the Bible I got delivered from that junk (laughs) I had to get away from that devil but I mean some people you're trying to steal my blessings and my hope pastor shut up and sit down somewhere amen I mean, come on, man. This is what you learn. You learn to cast them evil spirits down. So you just, you know, get your ideas on the Bible. We're soldiers here, amen? Amen. Soldiers ain't got time to, I mean, we got to be ready to travel. We got to have our shoes on. What I showed you there in Deuteronomy 6 has to do with John 14. Amen? 
I could give you more. I could give you the prayer shawl in Numbers uh, 15, verse 38. You want to learn about the prayer shawl? What they put it on for and why it sends people to hell and why they're so glad to give you one. <laughs> it only cost you $100. I won't charge you much to send you to hell. I'll get you there free. Just come in and sit down in my parlor. I'll show you some great things. I mean, then the prayer shawl, it's very simple. I ain't got a lot of time here to go into this. But in the prayer shawl, John 14, I told the Jewish man that gave his life to the Lord, they had convinced him that he was holy. What I showed you in the book of Numbers. And what I showed you in Isaiah 47, verses uh, 8, 9, and 10. I didn't tell him about Isaiah 65, 5. Y'all know what that scripture is? Now, some of y'all need to know that. You need to look it up and lock it away in the mortuary of your mind. <laughs> I want to use the word mortuary because that's where something stays when it goes, normally. But uh, make it a fixture in your mind's a better word. So Isaiah 65, 5, you know what it says? Don't come near me, I'm holy. I'm holier than thou. You stay out there. You can, don't come near me. Don't you see I've got on all these holy clothes? I've got holy clothes and I've got these phylacteries. I've got the Word of God written on me. You can see them over there in Deuteronomy 6. They got it written on their little box they put on their forehead and on their arm. And then they got their prayer shawl. Boy, that makes them really ready. Man, you're a bad motor scooter when you got all that, got all that on. The problem is it just don't work anymore. Can I hear an amen? amen. I told man yesterday, I said, dude, that stuff's out of date. It went out of date with John 14, 16 with the Holy Spirit coming in and the Comforter, which means intercessor. How many of y'all would rather pray with the Holy Spirit? I mean, this is something. If you look at the prayer shawl in Numbers 15, verses 38, 39, you know, it's not hard to find out that those little fringes on the prayer shawl and the blue and white, it's all in the Holy Ghost. The blue and white, He came from heaven. By the way, they hijacked the color of blue and white. And the ideal that came from heaven and the other ideal is the little fringes they got on a prayer shelf. You've never seen one. They got these little fringes on them. I used to point to this guy that I worked with sometime. I said, hey, what is that, man? He said, that's to remind us of the Word of God. But you know, the Bible said in these verses here, John 14, 16, John 14, 23, John 14, 26. These are verses that you should remember if you want to know anything about the Bible and if you really want to help somebody. If you don't know those scriptures, you know, you don't know nothing about 2 Timothy 2.15 says, study yourself to show yourself approved unto God. That's not a something you should do. It said if you want to be approved unto God. Amen? Now I know some people's greater than the Bible, but we'll let them go today. What does it say, brother, in John 14.16? <clears throat> He said, I will pray to you and another comforter will come. Is that what it says? And you know what? The word comforter means intercessor, right? All you got to do is look it up. If you've got a strong Bible concordance, it's probably got one in your pew. You look at it, that's what it means. You find these other scriptures like verse 23. You know, I could talk about some more fellowshipping with him in verse 21, John 14, 21. But in verse 23, <clears throat> it uses the word abode. That's where the Holy Spirit will come unto you and He'll stay with you and help you. One of the greatest things that you can see is verse 16 in John 14 because it talks about that He will send Him in my name and He will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So you go back and look in Numbers 15, 38, 39. You can find out it's, it's right there. The Holy Spirit has replaced that. Now, he asked me about that. Could I keep that? And I told him, I said, well, you can't have both of them. If you want to be saved, you trust in the blood, you trust in the Holy Spirit, you trust in your Bible. Amen? And if you fall from grace, it's because you're trusting in something else. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 17, what? I come not to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. Read your Bible. Matthew 5, 17. 
He said in 518, till, you know, that all of these things will be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away. None of these things shall be unfulfilled. In other words, these things are always fulfilled in Jesus because there's eternal life. Okay, go back with me quickly. My time's running out. Go over me back to Revelations. I got there to help people a little bit because everybody don't know what I've taught you today. And so we'll help some of these people to get some great things of the Lord. <clears throat> you find out that, like I said, there's a lot of Satanists today that have taken over our countries. They've taken over the preaching of the church through the media because they control the preachers. They control everything they get because they bring it out on the TV and you know these guys that think they're really cool they get them a, a thing and try to hear what they're saying because they got all of this money and they own national worldwide television and they think they're on there because they can really preach the Bible. <laughs> I thought that too when I first picked up on it I thought these guys must be really good man. Come to find out they work for somebody hello they was selected, hello, not by God, not because they're so great of preachers, because they know how to maneuver through the scriptures. Without mentioning Jesus, casting out devils, healing the sick, never talking about hell, never talking about demons, never talking about hell, fire, suffer, worms that eat people in hell. They never talk about that. How I many of y'all know, you ever listen, I haven't listened to them in years now, but you know, that's something they don't ever do. You want to get big in the church, learn how to preach Ashtaroth and Baal. Those are the guys that you learn about their doctrine. They never talk about anything but positive and prosperity and your blessings. And you know, they don't get you into the Word of God. They want to talk you into how great you are. If you believe what they believe. Copeland called me the other day, his daughter. Wanted to know if we was going to be there and we was going to be at there. They wanted to pray with us. I said, yeah, over my dead body. <laughs> yeah, I, t- I definitely need the demons to pray over me. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Anyway, here's the idea. Revelations 13. I want you to know something. I'm going to bring it out to you now and you watch this. It says in verse number 14, they use the word worship. That word worship in the Greek means that hey, you will lick his hands. You will lick his body. He thinks he's God. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. He says that he is God. He lifts himself up. You understand these scriptures here. This word worship talks about that. Now, look at this. I can tell you about, <clears throat> my time's running out, but I can tell you about 11 and 12 and 13. 13, they do these great wonders to make fire come down from heaven. Only the people that know about mind control and have their heads sealed in this time will be able to avoid this. You're talking about very powerful miracles. One of the sorceries that you find out in the book of Acts, is I've got it listed here, it talks about miracles and you know what? They believe because of his magic that he is actually telling the truth. And what does he do? He points them toward that man. Look what he says. He exercises, verse 12, all the powers of the first beast before him. That first beast is in 12.3. I'm going to come back. And causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Then he makes that fire come down to convince everybody. Look in chapter 12, verse 3. 13, I mean. 13, 3. And I saw one of the heads that was wounded to death, and the deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. I wonder why everybody would wonder after the beast, and who is the head? Some people are not aware who this head is. If they would, they would take heed. But the head has been dead 2,000 years. And it came back to life after 70 A.D. How many of y'all know what happened in 70 A.D.? The temple was destroyed and they had no other sacrifices, nowhere to offer them up. So for 2,000 years, it's been dead. But now it came back to life, supposedly, in 1948. 
This is what they claim. Anyway, the same forces behind them, the same demons that had the temple in those days that Jesus had exposed in Matthew 23, they rose back up again. So the whole idea is that this head, everybody's wondering about it. Oh, Israel is so great. Israel is so great. You wonder why they're saying this because they don't ever tell you, tell you about the other stuff. They use the poor people there, you know, to make you give them money. They use the Holocaust and they pull their Holocaust card to give you money, make you give them money. And they just go on and on with the same stories. You know, I'm not telling you that uh, their Holocaust is not real. You figure that out for yourself. I'll let them and you talk about that. But the ideal does exist here. If you challenge your Holocaust, they'll come after you because they make a lot of money with that. But anyway, let's talk about this man. Look what it says in verse 15. The beast that the image of the beast should so both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image to be killed. What is the image? We looked up the image and we searched about that for quite a while, but Mark, Brother Mark brought it out real good. Melanie, Michelle, they did a great job. You go to Ezekiel, you can find out what it is. What is it? Ezekiel 23, 16. That's it. Ezekiel 16, and they worship the image of men with fornication. How do you do that? They worship the image of the beast with committing whoredom with them. Whoredom is sexual perversion. This is the ideal of the Babylonian Talmud, of the Jerusalem Talmud. This has to do with the traditions of the elders. This is what they did. What am I saying? I'm saying that the worship of this man with the closer examination of verse 15 you're not worshiping the beast in 12.3, totally, but you're worshiping a man and a country. I told Brother Mark this morning, I said, look, when you look in Daniel chapter 7, you find out that a, one of the beasts, you know, you started out with the lion, then you came to the bear, then you came to the leopard, and then you came to Rome. These were the beasts that fan, finally come, and the Rome was the one that ruled the world, but they all had a person and a country. As an example, the leopard was Alexander the Great, and they were Greece. I could tell you here that there's, there was no name for the Roman emperor who took over, and so 